I'm not sure who needs to hear this, but it has to be said, the Miami Dolphins are failing at free agency. I'm sorry, none of these moves prove to me that the Dolphins are building something special or actually have a clear plan of attack. Based on what the Miami Dolphins have done in the first two days, I'm left scratching my head. Chris Greer had the most cap space available in the entire league. Add in the fact that he could also increase his cap limit by cutting players that shouldn't be on this team, and you could potentially gain an extra $21 million in cap space. Why that hasn't been done, yet is another example of how this past offseason has been a disappointment. The weakest position on the Miami Dolphins' depth chart is quarterback and offensive line. Chris Greer stated at the NFL Combine that the Miami Dolphins are officially out of the Deshaun Watson drama, which I still believe is a mistake. The Dolphins are all in on Tua Tagovailoa and the hope that he can showcase something that no one has seen in the past two years. If that doesn't work, there is always the option of looking at Teddy Bridgewater, the Miami Dolphins' brand new backup quarterback. I'm not sure what to think of the quarterback room, as both players have similar or just about the same ceiling. The downside in all of this, is that we have already seen the ceiling for Bridgewater, Miami Dolphins fans just hope that Tua doesn't share the same fate. Offensive line. This was the year that Miami was supposed to spend on actual talent that will help protect their quarterback and improve a running game that has been missing for years. Miami has been sitting pretty and not doing anything, which doesn't make sense. Yes, Chris Greer decided that Connor Williams makes a lot of sense and handed him a two-year deal. Thanks for that Chris. You basically just signed the most penalized offensive guard in the league last year, that was actually benched by his team, due to the costly penalties that he made. Morgan Mose, why didn't the Dolphins make an offer to this veteran player? He started all games the past two seasons, presented above average grades in both run and pass blocking, and just signed with the Ravens for a $5 million cap hit for the next three years. Oh, and he plays the most important position for Tua, which is right tackle, his blindside. Instead the Dolphins' primary focus for day two was addressing their linebacker unit. Not with new blood but re-signing the same players to one-year contracts? Duke Ridley, Alandon Roberts and Sam Egavo and all signed to continue to be Miami Dolphins, rather than look at, Bobby Wagner or Miles Jack, that was released yesterday, or even Anthony Hitchens. Not to pull the rug from these players, but what impact did any one of them have? Duke blocked a punt last year and Roberts had a pick six, but those are two plays pretty much equate to the same level of play that fans might look for this year, where is the upgrade? I'm left scratching my head on all the moves that have been made, asking one very important question, where is the upgrade? As of right now, I can't see it or find it. The Miami Dolphins already agreed to a deal with one running back earlier in the week, and now, it appears they've added another back to the room. According to NFL Network's Ian Rapoport, the Dolphins have signed running back Raheem Mostert to a one-year deal worth $3.1 million. The former Boilermaker spent the last five years with the San Francisco 49ers just like new Dolphins head coach Mike McDaniel did. Mostert, 29, has dealt with a number of injuries in his career. In his five full seasons with the 49ers, he appeared in just 45 of 81 possible games. A knee injury in 2021 during the season opener kept him from missing the remainder of the season. When he has been on the field, he's been productive, rushing for 1,610 yards and 11 touchdowns on 5.7 yards per carry. The Dolphins' running back room is starting to take shape with Mostert joining Chase Edmonds, agreed to a deal, Miles Gaskin, Salvan Ahmed and Garrett Dokes.